Well, hello everyone and welcome! Welcome to Upper Lenosha! We're looking for a keykern. Still. Yeah, they're around here somewhere. I think they're up in this settlement right up here. I don't even remember the full chain of events for why we're looking for this. Let me think. Let me walk it back. Okay. We're looking for this keykern. Because... Baskarin wanted us to. Because the Kikrin might know something that Baskarin didn't know. Because we're ultimately trying to help our little plant friends in Little Solace. Tetarun, remind me why I'm here to talk to you. It's been a little bit. Customer, be welcome. Not customer? Not come with custom? Bring something for Tetarun? Yes, here is your scarlet... Right! You left a scarlet earring. <laughs> I remember now. A weathered brass earring fitted with a polished scarlet stone. A favorite of the forgetful Kikur and Tetarun. Boy, not the only forgetful one here, huh? Tetarun, forget this! Forget it, druthers! Tetarun swore would never forget earring, but never forget forgot. Tetarun, thank! Tetarun, thank! Good Baskarun doing good? Good Baskarun, good to Tetarun. Tetarun, miss good Baskarun. <sighs> <laughs> uh, all adorable. Hmm... Bit of headgear that seems kind of okay, but then I love my little feather. Whatever, I'll, I'll grab it. Who's... No one says I have to put it on. Okay. Um, Tetarun Microbrewing. What are we doing? Has places for you to go and thingies for you to get. Doesn't everybody? Good Baskarun helped Tetarun. Tetarun dead without good Baskarun. Must give thankies. Many, many thankies. Tetarun give Kikarun, uh, Kikarun firewater for Baskarun. Baskarun love firewater. You help Tetarun make fire water? Need thingies to make. Need many, many thingies. Oh boy. Need curl pup whiskers. Need three good curl pup whiskers. Weird drink makings, but okay. A Rome Reborn does have a pretty large amount, relatively, of quest chains like this, where you're just kind of going and doing a whole lot of seemingly unimportant things, and sometimes very unimportant things. <laughs> Stuff like this, where you're just running around and goodness. I don't really feel like taking part in this. Even though it does involve the... Ah, oh, fine. These are fates. I don't remember if I talked about them before. They're just sort of like ambient little quest tasks you can do that you just find out in the world. They're everywhere. They're all over the place in every map. Uh... And you have to sink your level to them to be able to participate, but in doing them you can get experience and money and various rewards. They're good to do, in passing. And again, they are everywhere. Hey, uh, I guess we're, we're level synced. Yeah, you'll actually get some experience from this, Quay friend. Get in there. Learn the ins and outs of battle. Kick them. Or peck. You know, that's fine, too. Express yourself. What was I talking about? Right. A Rome Reborn has a lot of quests sort of like this, where you're doing kind of seemingly unimportant tangential things and long chains of unimportant feeling things. That can get a little bit tiresome. Later expansions will do that on occasion as well. Half the time is a joke. <laughs> it feels like sort of a winking reference of like, remember when we used to make you do this stuff all the time? Yeah. <laughs> And usually it's more to a purpose in later expansions. I guess I say that just to assure you that if this sort of side story, tangential feeling stuff is tiresome to you, it is not the bulk of what Final Fantasy XIV's questing is, ultimately. I guess I've probably made that clear already before in past episodes. <laughs> in my efforts to convince people to continue watching this. This is likely to be the last one of these episodes I actually record of this until before finally starting to release the series and seeing how it's received. So if views are dropping off by this episode, it's possible this may be the last one, at least for a while. Even if views are bad, I may come back to it just for fun. Now and then. I'm hoping there's a fair number of people watching, though, because if there are, then great. I've got lots of reason to continue making these regularly till we can get to the real good stuff. Speaking of which, enough of this. Let me cut ahead to the real good stuff, or better stuff anyway. Whew, that took a while. 
killed three curl pups and then some. But we got whiskers. And there's another one of these fates that I'm definitely not doing, even though I love this crap design so much. It's from Final Fantasy XI. This is just ripped straight out of Final Fantasy XI, these little stone shells. I fought so many of these things <laughs> in the Valkyrm Dunes. I don't recommend XI. <laughs> I played it for many years and loved it in its day. I don't recommend it anymore. <laughs> okay. Tetarun make fire water for Buskarun. You bring thingies Tetarun need? I sure do. It takes almost a full year for a curl to grow its first whiskers. It took less than a minute to remove it. No, well now, game, come on. This was your idea. You brought all thingies. Tetarun make fire water now. Make good fire water for good Buskarun. Tetarun start making fire water now. Good fire water take time. More time, more good. You come back later. Okay. Um. Has has now been long enough. Can I can I talk to you now? Actually, here I'll give you the few seconds it takes me to open this weapon coffer and see if it's anything that I want to use. Wouldn't mind a weapon upgrade. What is it? Iron bill? Sure. It's slightly better. How's it look? Is the real question. Huh. A little weird looking for an axe, but, you know, kind of plain. Whatever. We'll go with it for now. Why not? There will be plenty more in the future. Tetarin, are you done? Tetarin appears to have finished his gift for Buskaroon. Great. Tetarin, make fire water. Good, good fire water. You take the Buskaroon. Good fire water for good Buskaroon. Tell Buskaroon no drink now. Tell put away one year. One year make best flavor. Ah, <sighs> Tetarun hopes Buskaroon happy. Tetarun gives Buskaroon thankies. Many, many thankies. You tell Buskaroon. Tetarun make big shop someday. Biggest shop in Eorzea. Make many, many sparklies. All thanks to good Buskaroon. <laughs> I love how many different speech patterns there are uh, for the, like, various sentient... Sapient? I don't actually know which term I'm supposed to use. The, for all those different, like, thinking and speaking species in this world, there's actually a lot of thought that has gone into not just, like, the speech patterns, but naming and language and everything for all the different races in the world, and I I think it's quite cool that the, the writers go to that much effort. The Gobbies and the Kikerns and just about everything else that talks has their own weird speech patterns, and they're all consistent. I think it's neat. It's fun world building. Anyway. Buskaroon, I have brought for you thankies and drinkies. I don't remember what for. Something to do with our fun little leafy folk. I am helpful one after all. Ah, you've returned. Thank you for seeing Tedarun's belongings to him. Uh, what's this? For me? Indeed so. Kick and Firewater, a foul brew made by tossing various items found in the wild, both live and dead, into a barrel of water and letting the concoction ferment for a sen night under the warm sun. You're welcome. Kick and Firewater. So he remembers my fondness for the drink, does he? Why, that old... He... Ah, oh, bloody hells. Who's got onions back there? <laughs> he says to shelve it for a year, does he? Ah, that sounds about right. I hate to have to wait, but I reckon it'll be worth it. This stuff has an aroma and body unlike any dr other drink I know. It's gonna be a long year. And what say you come back then, friend? We'll see if we can't make it through this bottle together. You know, I'd like that. I'll take the gloves, too. Those are slightly better. And I feel like I've been in this gear for... I don't know, like half the series at this point. It feels like we're due for a change. Hmm. How do they look, though, is the question. Eh. Sure. Uh, uh, if Buskarun had his druthers, he'd have an adventurer with whom to share talk of sylphs. There was word while you were away. Sylphs were seen in the wood, but near no lands of their own. Now, this was a place near to here, a place we've never known a sylph to come. Something must have given them cause to venture this far. More than like the missing sylphs' elders among them. Here at... Excuse me. Personal space. More, uh... Here, I've marked the tract where they were sighted on your map. Go see if there's anything to be seen. Right, we're looking for the Sylph Elder. I remember now. That's... That's what I was doing. Hello? Sylphs? Anyone? Oh, destinations. Here we go. Yeah. Investigate a bunch of specified areas. Okay. Waiting. Nothing. Tell you what, I'll go investigate the rest of the areas. <laughs> and I'll be back with you when one of them turns up some results. 
Eh, not a whole lot to report, honestly. At one of the destinations, I had an Imperial, like, hop out of the bushes and attack me. So I bonked him with my axe, and that was the end of that. Oh, hey! It happened very much like this. Basically. Now you're caught up. Oh, another? Fine. We'll go for three. Not very sturdy, these Imperials. Granted, I am, like, 50 levels above them, but still. They're gonna have to send some sturdier ones, is all I'm saying. Let's go on. I didn't find anything. So, is there ought to be found in the wood? Where did you come to? Garleans? In this part of the Twelve's Wood? Hmm. First Sylphs and now Garleans, and all in the same place. It cannot be a mere coincidence. Might the Garleans be following the Sylphs? Tracking them, or giving chase, mayhap? But, nah, not this far into the forest. The Whalers' spires are everywhere. Imperials could never have stolen past them all. How in the bloody hells could they... Unless... Unless someone guided them through. Someone who knew where the spires stand and when the Whalers watch. A Gridanian traitor. Hmm, that sounds bad. Thanks for the pants, though. <laughs> the MMO experience. Hmm, Biscaran has more work for a willing adventurer. I'm glad you've come, friend. There's something I want to talk to you about. Yeah, you know, you know I said I thought we might have a traitor in our midst to someone as was aiding the Garleans? I'm thinking I may have identified our suspect. There's a regular of mine who used to dine on thin soup and simp his pint on account of not being able to afford another, but of late he's taken to ordering my best wines and the finest cuts of meat I can lay my hands on. Were he a merchant, I'd probably think nothing of it, but this lad's a wood whaler. And wood whalers don't earn that kind of coin. By chance, I was musing on where the money was coming from when you first told me about the Garleans in the forest and couldn't help putting the two and two together. Suffice it to say, if a whaler is working for the Empire, none of us is safe. The lad I'm talking about goes by the name of Laurentius. Last I heard, he was in the South Shroud. Find him, Dermon, and if he is up to no good, put an end to it. And him, if it comes to that. You got it, sir. Laurentius, you and I need to talk. Sounds like someone may be in for a good bonking. With an axe. A tiny one, but... Three out of three Imperials agree. Hits pretty hard. Can you not see I'm on patrol? Be gone. If you have business with the whalers, take it to the barracks. That... Hey, sideburns. We were talking. You think you can just run away from my conversation? My legs aren't that short. I really wish there was a way to turn off having the... Fate music and thing pop up every time you walked just barely inside its radius. <laughs> it gets mildly annoying after a long time. Not long now. <laughs> to think patrol routes and rations would fetch such a price. No more than I deserve, though. Tis little wonder the Empire's risen to such heights if only the whalers paid men their worth. Hi. I'm short, but I'm here. Can't ignore me. It, you! What did you... How long have you... Help! 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 Please, come quick, my friends. It's I, Laurentius. I I'm under attack. I sense a hostile presence. Yep. Hey. Shoo. Anyway, Laurentius, we need to talk some more. Wait, was there another one? Can we talk? Can we talk yet? Hey. How... How did you... You just... I, I know nothing. I was on patrol. He just appeared. I... I thought you were working for the Garleans. Come on, man. This is... Okay. You can outrun me in a sprint, but you gotta rest sometime, buddy. I have short legs, but they never get tired. Where are you? Hey. The wrenches. There you are. Ah, oh, boy. Someone's asking for a thwacking. Oh, a fight, huh? Very well. How long do you mean to keep this up? What is it you imagine I've done? Enough, enough, I say. It's... It's over, then. I, I sold maps and rations to the Empire. It, it was I. I meant no harm. I only wanted the coin. The Whalers are good. Strong. I was proud to join their ranks. 
I am proud, but they do not provide. They preach justice, honor, and duty, but in the end, it, it's those with money who do as they will, who live as they will. So I sought an opportunity to change my fortunes and took it. All I've done, I've done for money. Endangered myself, my home, everything, and everyone I love. Well, my actions have put your life in danger, too. Though you do not yet realize how much. <laughs> Bloody idiot, did you imagine that you'd cornered me? It's not I who's cornered. Garleans, I've brought the Lalafell bastard! One, two, three... Yep, three whacks with the axe ought to do it. Permit me a question, if you will. Are all adventurers so deluded as to believe they can challenge the power of Garlemald? You'd need a veritable mountain of guilt to fund such an endeavor. Such is the cost of fighting great power, or of making it, or of remaking it, as we will Gridania. So that's the way of it. Swapped your hard bunk at the barracks for a feather bed in Garlemald, did you? <laughs> You there, Lalafell. You stand here at old Busk's wish, no? Then you don't stand alone. Who are you two? I was gonna handle this, but... Okay. Actually, now that I think of it, my level is synced, so I... It's a real fight. Fine. Fine. You mean to stand against the might of the Empire with this red belly rabble at your side? Ha! <laughs> your eyes betray your words, coward. You know full well the Wailers fear the Wasp's sting. I don't know what that means. I'm just gonna kill everything with an axe until... You're done being cocky. So far, so good, though. Do I win? Legless Laurentius. I mean, not yet. But if you keep running, honestly. Do you have more friends? Yeah, you do have more friends. Fine. All of you die. My business is with this one. And eventually, everyone in the Empire. But y'all wait your turn. This is a fight Buskaron once won, then the Coral Curl Kalaws will fight it. What? Who are they? What? Who are they? Oh, I think these are all like sort of like local factions and stuff. I feel like I remember that from other playthroughs. Side quests would reveal a lot of this information, I think. <laughs> I do recommend doing side quests if you're playing on your own. The added world building and flavor can be awesome. But this is going to take long enough as it is. Well, the bad news, Laurentius, is that you have way too much HP. But the good news is I fixed it. Ha! How has it come to this? Impossible. How'd you beat the best the Empire's finest? That was definitely not their finest, bud. <laughs> I don't think you've met many Imperials. And with bandits and poachers at your side. They're your sworn enemies. Why do they fight with you and not against you? Ah, but I know the only answer only too well. Buscaron. This is his doing. His words are wont to inspire men to act. Better men than I. Gods, what have I become? What have I done? I... I'm sorry. No more will I pursue this folly. No more lies. No more bribes. I'll go to the Order of the Twin Adder and confess my crimes. There is something I'd like to, you to tell Buscaron. Tell him Laurentius the Fool says thank you. I feel as though a veil's been lifted from before my eyes. Good. Man, a few swings from an axe can fix anything. Video games taught me that. And here I was going and looking for an elder sylph, and I happened to take care of a traitor problem. Still kind of worried about the elder sylph, though. I Laurentius confessed to his crimes. I just had word from the twin Adder. Seems he marched straight into the nest and gave himself up. The lads had quite a life, you know. His mother was killed by a brigand when he was only small. As a young man, he joined the Whalers, hoping to spare his fellow Gridanians the misery he'd known growing up. Trouble is, protecting Gridania is too big a job for one man, and he came to believe that he couldn't make a difference, that it was hopeless. There are few things more dangerous than desperation, and a man lost in the dark is easily drawn to the glimmer of coin. I reckon he thought that if he couldn't change the lot of his fellow man, he might as well change his own. Thing is, he was making a difference, just not on his own. Somehow he'd failed to grasp one simple truth, that those things we cannot do alone, 
We must do together. Huh? He asked you to thank me, did he? Then there's good in him yet. I just hope them at the Adder's Nest are able to see it. What he's done ain't easy to forgive, but I'd like to think he'd be afforded a chance to make amends. But let us leave fates to the Twelve. I have other news for you, Dermon. The self Sylph Elder's been found. Oh, great. Someone's been doing my job. Where are they? Into the... You're... That sounds like a task. Buscaran has reliable information regarding the whereabouts of the Sylph Elder. Okay. Go on. Oh, there you two are. It's taken a fair old while, but we finally got our hands on some reliable information concerning the whereabouts of your missing green friend. Ahem, his name is Frixio, and he's the oldest among the Sylphs of Little Solace. Long has he represented his kind in dialogue with the Gridanians. Yes, he's like a bridge between us and them. A small, leafy green bridge that we can't find at the moment. And bridges are of no use if you don't know where they are. That's why it's so important that we find him. <laughs> You're right, Ida. There's an abandoned dungeon called the Thousand Maws of Todorak here in the South Shroud. Twas by the entrance to that place that Frixio was seen, and not long ago, neither. If you hurry, I reckon you'll find him. Walking ones, please help this one! This one needs help! Needs help to help Elder One! Poor Frixio! Poor, poor Frixio! Whoa, whoa! Hold your chocobos. Take a deep breath and tell us what's wrong, nice and slow. Elder One went into Todorak, but has not returned. This one's worried, so very worried. And you're right to be. The place fair crawls with nasties waiting to make a meal of anyone daft enough to wander in. What in the seven hells was he thinking, entering that bloody death trap? Elder One had no choice. Imperial Ones were chasing Elder One. Please, Walking Ones must help Elder One. Help Elder One now! Ah, the fates conspire against us. Forgive my pragmatism, but Frixio is our best hope of reaching an accord with the Sylphs. Were we to lose him, all our elf efforts thus far will have been for naught. I will tend to her wounds. Ida, make haste to the Adder's Nest and request assistance. Understood. German, go to the Thousand Maws of Todorak and see that Frixio comes to no harm. Peace between man and Sylph rests upon your success. All right. Looks like we're going to another dungeon, everyone. And what the hey, I know we've... We're not that far from, like, episode length right now, but heck with it. If this is to potentially be the last one, let's go out with something exciting. Um, where am I going? Speaking with a guy? Oh, it's probably a person near the dungeon, I see. Okay. Yoo-hoo. Is this the place? By order of the Elder Seed Seer, the dungeon known as the Thousand Maws of Todorak has been placed under control of... What? The Sylph Elders inside? Are, and are you sure of this? How in the seven hells did he manage to sneak by? God, strike me down for a purblind fool. You must find the Sylph Elder before he falls prey to the fiends within. Entrance to Todorak is ordinarily restricted, but these are exceptional circumstances. Pray, assemble a rescue party and enter as soon as you're ready. I think I will. It's kind of late night right now. I don't know how many play friends are online, but we can try to form a crew. One moment. All right, looks like we've got ourselves a crew of late-nighters. <laughs> we are joined by, I think, an all-new group here. We've got Kalu, uh, Ketaven, Quetaven? Tell me how to pronounce your name later. And Bailey. <laughs> this should be fun. All right. Into Todorak we go, then. Yep. Join! Oh. <laughs> Bailey's changing areas. I didn't know that was a thing that could limit you. Um, take two. Join! Yay, there we go. Welcome to the fourth main story quest dungeon, everyone. Nothing too terribly exciting in this one either. Except for fun new visual flavor. Dungeons start getting good in the expansions, though, I have to say. Both visually and mechanically. Really fun, impressive stuff. All right, we're here. And here is our group. All looking good and very tall and stylish. Love it. I am really, again, feeling very outclassed style-wise by this Look at this group. I've got work to do. <laughs> uh, but yes, here's our squad, and I will be your tiny tank this evening. All right. Two more. 
So the gimmick with this dungeon is wandering through the place and gathering these magical photo cells, which you need to charge various terminal things. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The gimmick with this place is there's like spiders and scorpions and stuff, I guess, is really the main point. <laughs> and sometimes you need to collect things to progress, which now that I say it out loud, isn't all that interesting. <laughs> so it goes sometimes with saying things out loud. Ooh, but if you want some fun trivia, though, and this is the sort of thing that I think other uh, people in comments could probably provide more of in fun ways. This is a dungeon that was in the 1.0 version of the game, and it was much bigger back then. It was a mu like dungeons, as I understand it, worked very differently. They, they were way more open ended and required a ton of exploration. Uh, and it was all about like choosing and finding like which bosses you wanted to fight and how many chests you wanted to find in a limited amount of time to get rewards. It worked very differently, and if anybody in comments can explain that better than I am doing right now, which wouldn't be hard, then I encourage it. Because, frankly, I'd also like to know. <laughs> but yeah, like, there were way more branches of this dungeon- well, I mean, you can only see a little bit of it because I haven't explored it yet, but there were way more branches of it, is my point. There's also, the Speakers Network channel has a series- uh, I want to say it's called Remnants of a Realm, which catalogs all of the mechanical and visual and everything differences from 1.0 Final Fantasy XIV to modern Final Fantasy XIV. And if you're at all curious about that sort of stuff, definitely recommend it, because it's super cool. There we go. There's the fourth Magitech photo cell we need. Where'd that enemy come from? Really shirking my tanking responsibilities if anybody else is getting hit. Good thing it's just the four of us in here to see it, or this might be embarrassing. Anyway, we need these photocells to activate these terminals. Um, confession chamber terminal terminals. I've been through here a bunch of times, still couldn't really tell you what these are about. They cause a little mini-boss to spawn, though. Which is required to progress. That's the important thing. Let me know if this stuff is interesting, by the way. We can definitely cut more of the dungeons out. <laughs> if explaining the flow and mechanics of them is not at all interesting to you. <laughs> I don't have a very good natural gauge for what is or isn't interesting to someone watching this who hasn't played the game and has no interest in playing the game. But there. Terminal activated, and that... Opens door? Opens door. Yay! We proceed. Man, I shudder to think how bad my tanking is gonna get if we get to later dungeons in this playthrough that actually require... concentration? Or competent tanking? <laughs> Which I've not really been doing. <laughs> because I've been half concentrating on being entertaining and talking and forming coherent sentences. Well, halfway coherent anyway. As coherent as to be expected on this channel, you know? Y'all know what to expect around here. Things are getting a little bit more spidery, as you can tell. Apologies for anyone who doesn't love the whole spider thing. Gotta break through webs. Gotta hit these fleshy poison pods from a distance. If you walk in the green goo, you get slowed down. And sometimes you'll run into gates like these that suck you forward toward explodey poison pods, so... None of these mechanics are that punishing, but it's good training for young MMO players to not just run through an autopilot, like I'm doing half the time. Not that I'm the worst tank imaginable, by any stretch. Trust me, everyone's got their horror stories of getting into that party with the, like, level 60 tank with very early game gear, or the tank who assures you that, like, well, I can't have all the enemies attacking me. I would die. <laughs> I have had that happen. Or the healer, who insists on pulling enemies. It's just not a thing you want. Hmm. 
All right, I think we're getting close, though. Yes, the final boss room is here. And also some cutscenes, so I hope everyone is <laughs> another good reason to party up with friends. They'll be patient. I've had other parties I've been with literally finish the fight before this cutscene finished on me. <laughs> Hello. Darkness. <laughs> El Korn, he draws. The mighty slayer of Ifrit comes now to me. <laughs> With a countenance that bespeaks understanding. An intriguing power, the Echo. I must needs choose my words with care. Mayhap I might if I deign to speak in my guest cruel tongue. We meet at last. I am Laha Brea of the Asians, servant to the one true God. Yours is a most fantastical tale, truly absorbing. Thank you. I mean, I've been trying. It is a tale to tell Eorzea's children before bedtime, and it will soon be dark, bringer of light. The Dark Minions. All that stands between this world and darkness is an irksome anomaly in the ether. The Echo. Yes, yours is a most fascinating tale. Alas, like all good tales, it must needs come to an end. But fear not. Hear, feel the presence of evil. For the end of your tale is but the beginning of another. The tale of the crystal's demise. Well, it's fight times. And thank you to my party members for <laughs> their dancey, cleany patience. <laughs> uh, what good folks. <laughs> the creators of this game do get way better eventually about uh, tactically placing cutscenes so that other people aren't stuck waiting for a long time. They don't start getting good at that until the first expansion, though. And actually, this is far from the worst defender. <laughs> Some of the worst defenders are right near the end of the game. Trust me, if we get there, you'll know them when you see them. Ah, oh, no, you don't. No. Hey. All eyes on me. Hey. Hey. Pay attention to me. I'm the smallest, tastiest looking of all. Ah, jeez. No. No poison. No poison. No, thank you. Don't want. Don't want. Oh, I need to be attacking the tail so we can't do poison anymore. That's right. That's right. Attack tail. Damage tail. So it can stop poisoning everything. Damage the tail. And also tank the enemies. Right. Gotta tank the enemies as well. Can't be forgetting that part. That's also an important part of my job. Pay attention to me. Kill the tail. There we go. Now it's stunned. Yes. Good, good, good. Don't stand in poison. Kill everything. It's really the secret to most fights. There we go. Good job, squad. Once again. Making do despite my tanking. Yay. <laughs> and what a good squad we have here. 
<laughs> doing poses and everything. Thank you, all three of you. Akalu, Kwitavin, please, again, let me know how to pronounce your name later. And Bailey, thank you very much for joining. It's been a very good time. And you all did great. I will also dance. <laughs> this dance is how I communicate friendship, apparently. <laughs> but all right, let's get on out there. Oh, right, and collect our stuff. Um. Well, hello. Ugh, finally, fresh air. <laughs> Mayhap not so fresh, but better than before. Ah, sinister one is gone. This one can leave this awful place. Did Walking One vanquish the Many-Legged One? This one is grateful to Walking One. This one is called Frixio, eldest of these ones of Little Solace. You're adorable. Oop. Hold on. Echo headache. Alpha Squad reporting, sir. Nothing of note at Lark's call, sir. Understood. Return to Area 12. Damn it all, where is that accursed icon hiding? No sign of our wizened friend. I'm afraid not, my lord. Shall I order that the search perimeter be expanded? Absolutely not. We risk alerting the Gridanians to our presence. His Excellency bid us avoid unnecessary confrontation. Loath though I am to admit it, I found no evidence to suggest that Ramu will be gracing the mortal realm in the near future. I ask you, what good is a god who does not grant one's wishes? Were I a sylph, I should strongly consider finding myself another idol. Which reminds me, what of the sylphs we captured? A handful of them seemed to be in reasonably good health when last I looked. Uh, apologies, my lord. I fear we may have been overzealous in our efforts to compel them to summon their icon. Really, Centurion, were you not aware that vegetables bruise easily? It is well that I did not entrust you with the important task of making my dinner. Well, mayhap it was a kindness. Better dead in truth than dead to one's own god, I suppose. If you believe in such things. Dawn is upon us. Make ready to withdraw. <sighs> Useless. We're so close to completion, I can fair taste it, but at this rate... No, I must be patient. Our efforts will bear fruit in due time. What was it you always said? Ah, yes. Though it mean bringing down the very heavens, we shall challenge the limits of possibility, or who shall challenge the limits of possibility if not we? In that alone were you right, Garland. But your star is long fallen, while mine doth begin to rise. And it shall burn so bright, so bright that Lord Van Balesar's ultimate weapon will seem a mere candle beside it. <laughs> Man, they do so many more interesting things with the Empire later. <laughs> Those walking ones did for Noxia. This one is certain of it. This one fears that other Taken Ones also suffered the same fate. This one's convinced. Walking Ones have black hearts. Seek only to harm these ones. Walking Ones are not to be trusted. Now, now, Noraxia, do not pass judgment too hastily. Not all Walking Ones are alike. Though there are evil ones among the Walking Ones, there are good ones also. Hmm? Does walking one feel unwell? I'm good. This one would know. What brings walking one to this place? Came to this one's rescue at Noraxia's bidding. Then this one owes walking one a debt of gratitude. 
Hmm. Walking one has questions about Lord Ramu. Then this one will provide answers. You're adorable. We're both adorable. But first, let these, these ones quit this lightless place. This one will return to Little Solace, and when Walking One is ready, please come and see this one. These ones may speak properly then. Then it is settled. Let this one accompany Walking One outside. Yes, please. Let's get out of here. Ah, finally daylight. It feels like there's barely been any daylight <laughs> in these recordings the last few episodes. All right. Mascaran, I did the thing with help. Ah, oh, you're back. Tell me the Sylph Elder as well. Thank the gods for that. I don't rightly know what to make of the rest of your tale, but I'm full glad Frixio didn't come to any harm. Ah, but there I go, tempting fate. Run over to Little Solace and secure us peace with the Sylphs before aught else befalls us, huh? Rest assured, I'll send word to our friends of Charlene and the Twin Adder both. You've done Gridania a great service this day, lad, and earned yourself a place of honor here at the Druthers in so doing. Be sure and come by whenever you feel like a drop of Kikrin Firewater. I will. Thank you for that invite, and also the armor. And another quest also, I guess? We kind of need to wrap it up here today, but... Say, friend, there's something I'd like to ask you to, uh, to see you... There's something I'd like to ask you to see delivered to the Sylphs of Little Solace. This Azima Rose Oil. That wasn't even hard. Why did I... Whatever. It's a gift to celebrate the safe return of their tribe's elder and a token of Gridania's desire to unite. The wood is not what it once was. The calamity changed the elementals. Weakened them. Until their strength is returned, we must lend them ours to keep the wood safe. But ours alone will not be enough. We must have the strength of the Sylphs as well. Only by working together and fighting together will we survive together, and the Twelfths would with us. The gift I ask you to bear is a symbol of the hope that both Gridanian and Sylph alike will live to see the light beyond this darkness. You know what, that's a good... That's a good reason to send a gift. Let's go give the gift, and then call it a day, huh? Where do we... Right, this way. Warping! Yeah, I don't think we've seen this place in daylight yet. Here it is. <laughs> Quite pretty. Ah, I'm back. Hello, these ones. A gift from Walking One Baskaran. A gift for these ones? You bet. Uh, a fragrant oil pressed from freshly harvested Azima rose hips. There you go. Such a lovely scent. This one's never smelled anything like this before. Walking One Baskaran and Adventuring One are very kind. Know that this one is deeply grateful. Many Walking Ones are scary. Many walking ones utter many lies and much deception. But this one's moved. Let all these ones be friends forever. I that's a great idea. Let's do that. Where's the... Yes, you. Hello! Oh, it's been a while. Kamuxio wants to discuss peace with Frixio. This one's been expecting walking one. This one fetches elder one. Finally. The thing we've been trying to do for... I've lost track of how many episodes. <laughs> this one is pleased to see Walking One again. Welcome to the home of these ones. Hey! Here just in time to be useless. Hello. Ah, there you are, German. We've just been hearing tell of your deeds of daring do. Well done. Thank you. Ah, the Walking Ones who aided Naraxia. This one is grateful. A pleasure to have been of service. If you do not mind by asking, how did you, your misadventure come about? This one does not mind. The misadventures, as Walking One calls them, of this one began when Imperial Ones entered the wood. Fearing trouble, these ones decided to watch Imperial Ones closely. But these ones watched too closely, and Imperial Ones noticed and tried to catch these ones. Having nowhere else to hide, this one fled into Totorak. Would that this one had not. In Todorak, a sinister one robed in black tried to feed this one to a many-legged one. A sinister one robed in black? Why do I have the feeling I should be more worried about that than I am? <laughs> I like Ida. Elder Frixio, we come to you as emissaries of the nation of Gridania. This missive bears the words of the Elder Seed Seer. Here you go. This one sees, so walking ones of Gridania are fearful of Lord Ramu. 
Plainly put, yes. Your people summoned the Lord of Levin, but once, yet, that single occurrence occasioned great alarm. But it's not as if the Gridanians dislike you or anything. Actually, it's just the opposite. They think of you as friends, and they don't want anything to get in the way of that. That's why the Elder Seed Seer wrote to you. Hmm, this one well knows and respects Horned One Kan Esena. Be assured, like Walking Ones of Gridania, these ones have no desire for conflict. These ones resorted to summoning Lord Ramu to protect the wood from Imperial ones. This one counseled against doing so, but was not heeded. Against this one's wishes, Lord Ramu was summoned, and all those ones who took part became touched ones. These ones want so desperately to turn touched ones back to normal ones, but did not know how, and still do not know. Touched Ones, meanwhile, wanted to turn these ones into Touched Ones, and did know how, so this one fled to Little Salis with all those ones who did not wish to be bound to Lord Ramu. Quite the majestic beard. But Walking Ones of Gridania need not fear Touched Ones or Lord Ramu. Unlike other Primal Ones, Lord Ramu is not callous and cruel. So long as Walking Ones do not trespass on these ones' ancestral homeland, where Touched Ones reside, Walking Ones will not suffer thunderous judgment. But this one has spoken enough of touched ones. This one would speak instead of these ones. As this one said, these ones desire peace with walking ones of Gridania, and so these ones ask for a chance to set things right. By way of an addendum, mortals who are tempered come to take on the qualities embodied by the primal in question. In the case of the Sylphs, Ramu's influence has made them fiercely protective of their homeland. That explains why they're so hostile towards trespassers, but what about the abductions? A fine question, Ida. The abductions are, I believe, an expression of the tempered sylph's desire for reconciliation, another quality traditionally associated with Ramu. In the crudest manner imaginable, they seek to bring their fellows back into the fold, a timely reminder that the challenges posed by each primal are unique. Elder Frixio, we thank you for making your will known to us. The people of Gridania will rest easier in the knowledge that they and the sylphs are united in their desire for peace. Wishing to cooperate, this one has written down the feelings of these ones. Please see that these feelings are conveyed to Horned One Kan Esena. Can do. And with that, I believe we can lay the matter of Ramu to rest. That Sylph's elder is very reasonable, I must say. You could learn a lot from him. Hm? Was that a jibe? If so, I feel it only fair to observe that one of us wouldn't recognize reason if it punched her on the nose. Did I say fair? I meant reasonable. You two sort this out. I'm going to go deliver the thing. Anyway, we're going to head back to the Waking Sands and tell Minfilia all about it. Fear not, we will be sure to mention the instrumental part you played in all of this. Yes, I, I did play just a part in all of this work. And while we see to that, we should appreciate it if you would deliver Frixio's missive to the Adder's Nest. Can do. Elder Frixio, we humbly thank you for your time. It has been an honor. The honor is this once. Together let the Walking Ones of Gridania and these ones find a way to live in peace. Please wait, Walking One Dermin. This one has yet to give Walking One a token of this one's appreciation. Ooh. When these ones summoned Lord Ramu, these ones were gifted this crystal. This one would now bestow the crystal upon Walking One as a symbol of these ones' trust. I do love the sparklies. Dermon just stares at them so intently. Well, that's three now. <gasps> this one was not mistaken about walking one. Walking One is destined to walk a fate far crueler than this one can imagine. 
A brilliant light from within walking one enveloped the crystal. This one saw. Mark this one well. That crystal will one day be of use to walking one. Walking one must keep that crystal safe at all times. Before walking one returns to Redania, this one would ask walking one to watch touched ones. So long as touched ones are not troubled, touched ones will not make trouble. If walking one witnesses touched ones making no trouble, mayhap walking one can testify to walking ones of Gridania that these ones mean no harm. These ones' homeland is fraught with danger. This one marks down safe places to look out for touched ones. Okay. Kind of looking for a stopping point here, Kamuxio. But, alright, if you insist, I will go stand lookout real fast. Really gotta wrap this up, though, buddy. There we are. Oop, got a little more moody in here. All right. Let's stop. And... Uh, here we go. Look out. Hmm. There are tempered sylphs in the distance. You do not sense that they pose a danger if left alone. That is great news. Good. And now we deliver Frixio's missive to Vorsai. I promise I'll read it, comments. <laughs> I'm recording all of this before the first episode comes out, so... This won't always be as big a problem. Just something of a problem. All right, heading back to Gridania. Let's wrap this up. Whew. Long one today, but worth it. Ah, if it isn't Derman. How went the meeting with the Sylphs? Prolonged, but good. The fluid lettering of the little solace Elder Frixio is as beautiful as it is unintelligible. <laughs> I'm missing from the Sylph Elder himself, if I may. So the Sylphs have no desire for conflict, nor do they intend to summon Ramu. And so long as we leave the Tempered Ones be, we need not fear any aggression on their part. The Elder Seed Seer will be overjoyed to hear that the Sylphs have welcomed our overtures. And in the knowledge that they bear us no ill will, we may channel our resources toward tackling the more conspicuous threats to our security. You've done this nation a great service, my friend. On behalf of all Gridanians, I give you my thanks. Excellent. And there, I'm gonna go ahead and call it, because it is a stopping point. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we will see, like, this is, I think, probably a good stopping point to see how the series is doing so far. Because if views are just, like, really tapering off and people are losing interest, which, understandable, the game is really not showing at its best right now and won't for a little while yet, uh, maybe this will be the last of it for now. Uh, but if y'all are enjoying this and uh, views are still going, then this series will continue. Maybe not always three episodes a week, but it will continue for sure, because I'm enjoying doing this a great deal. Uh, if you want to see this series continue, uh, please do sub consider subscribing or supporting us on Patreon. Let us know that you're supporting us for that reason. Uh, I, I've said it before, I would love to have an excuse to continue making, putting in the time and effort to make this series on top of the rest of the stuff we do. But thank you so very much for watching. And if this is the last I see of you, well, do take care of yourselves. Goodbye, and oh, come on, we can do better than that, Derman. Thank you all, and I'll see you later. A goodbye!